Hello friends, this is Nick from NLB Solutions once again and today I'm going to speak and show you how to clone a domain controller on Windows Server 2012 R2. Before we begin with uh, the things that we are going to do in this video, I want, just want to uh, have a brief view on the prerequisite check in order for you to uh, see and uh, prepare before you proceed with cloning a domain controller. One personal advice, do this in lab environment. Um, of course, Microsoft uh, says that this functionality is fully operational and you can do it into production environment as well. But personally, what I think is that it's really a better idea for you to, if you want to virtualize the domain controller, to just to install the virtual machine and promote it normally um, like the the normal process of uh, promoting a DC. Um, of course the cloning process will work but there are a few things that you need to check uh, beforehand so um, you can be prepared and no issues could occur and one of those things is, is that your hypervisor must support VM generation ID and um, hypervisors uh, Hyper-V running on Windows uh, Server 2012 and 2012 R2 support this feature other virtualization vendors um, will have this ability but you need to check um, and see uh, if this is available uh, with your virtualization um, hypervisor or host. Uh, other thing is that the source uh, virtual DC must be running 2012 or 2012 R2 in order for you to clone it. And last but not least, the PDC emulator row holder must be online and available to the clone DC and must be running 2012 R2. Now that we have the prerequisite checks, uh, the next thing that I want to speak about is what uh, are we going to do in this video. And first thing uh, first, I'm going to add the uh, source domain controller uh, computer object into the new clonable domain controller security group. That way we can provide the right for the uh, source domain controller to be cloned and the clone domain controller will be added automatically into this clonable domain controller group. If you don't add the um, source domain controller, the process will fail. The next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to check if there are any applications that are detected on my domain controller and will generate an XML list to allow these apl applications to be replicated. and Depending on the applications that you have, you need to check if they are um, okay to be cloned, if this functionality is working with that application. The next thing is I'm going to use the PowerShell command uh, uh, to create uh, a clone config file and I'm going to show you all the switches that are needed for you to create that file. And uh, in the end, I'm going to export the virtual machine that is the source domain controller and then import it once again using the VMware Hyper-V, uh, I'm sorry, the Hyper-V manager and um, when the process is done I'm going to show you what is the process and uh, uh, what is happening during the process of cloning the domain controller and when this is done I'm going to log into the machines and I'm going to check to see if the replications between the machines is okay, it, if it looks good I'm going to check the Active Directory to see if I have a new computer object for uh, my second domain controller so let's dig into the demo now that the presentation is off the table, I'm going to log into my domain controller which I've created under Hyper-V and um, as you notice there are several prerequisites that you need to take um, in place before going and cloning your domain controller and that is um, if your hypervisor supports the generation ID and um, in 2012 and 2010 12R2 Hyper-V servers, uh, they support the um, cloning process, that's a new feature that was uh, uh, implemented in Windows 2012. So before you go ahead and clone your domain controller, you need to be sure that uh, 
your hypervisor support this uh, function because it's uh, going to affect all of your systems, uh, all of your domain when you try to do it on older operating systems, for example 2008 and um, it's going to fail and uh, not going to work that way and you are going to end up with two domain controllers with identical um, ID information which is going to really um, affect your um, production if you are doing in this, uh, this in production but um, I must recommend that uh, you need to do this into lab environment only and if you have production environment I really um, would um, recommend going ahead and just creating a new virtual machine and uh, promoting it to a domain controller the normal way so I'm going to log into my domain controller and from there we can start configuring the machine for the cloning process. So first uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, add the domain controller which you need to clone or which you want to clone into a security group which is a new security group and it's called cloned, uh, clonable domain controllers and you need to find the computer object for your domain controller that you want to clone and open the properties and add the domain controller into the security group clonable domain controllers uh, that way you will allow this domain controller to be cloned if you don't do this uh, at the start of the process um, when you try to import the new uh, cloned machine when you start the process it will basically when you start the machine it will basically fail to do this so um, at the end both of the machines which are cloned will be in the clonable domain controller security group so you need to leave them there so I'm going to apply this click OK and minimize this window for now I'm going to open a PowerShell and run it as administrator and uh, the next step that we need to perform is to check if there are any services which are running on the domain controller which can prevent us from cloning it and for example I've added the DHCP service here and if you try to uh, create the clone config file without um, adding the DHCP for example into the into an exclude application list uh, it will fail to, to generate that file for you so um, in order for you to see what applications are preventing this uh, config file to be generated you can use the command get ADC cloning excluded application list and you can see here in my case I have the DHCP server and the Windows license management service um, I know that uh, both of the services are okay for me to be excluded and not to be cloned so what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate XML and when I use this switch it will create a new XML file that will add both services into and um, when I run the next command to create the clone config file it will uh, look into this uh, XML file and we'll see that I've ex ex added this um, uh, both services so let me just open the file so I can show you okay you can see that um, now I've added both the DHCP server and the WLMS into it so the next time when I try to run the command to create a config file it will not fail saying that I have services that are preventing me to create it so the next thing that um, I need to do is I need to go ahead and um, create the file which is needed for me to um, to clone my domain controller and the command that I'm going to use is new oops new ad dc clone config file and I'm going to start by using the switch static because I want static IP address and I want IPv4 address 
which is going to be 192.168.10.2 and next I want IPv4 um, default gateway which is going to be 192.168.10.254 and next I want uh, IPv4 subnet mask Okay, and the subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0 which is a normal 24-bit uh, subnet mask and in the end I'm going to add IPv4 DNS resolver which is the DNS servers so I'm going to add 192.168.10.1 which is my current machine and with comma I'm going to add the second domain controller which I'm going to promote and which I'm going to clone in just seconds. In the end I'm going to set the clone computer name which is the computer name of the machine and I'm going to call that 1DC2. Okay, And um, you can set the site name, you can add the domain controller into a specific site if you want. If um, uh, if you don't have any specific sites, it will just add it to the default first uh, site name. So I'm going to add a site name switch as well. Site name. And I'm going to add default first site name. If you have any sites, here is the moment that uh, you need to specify the name of the site. So I'm going to execute the command next and it's going to generate an, another XML file which I'm going to show you. Notepad, C, Windows, NTDS and then DC clone config XML. So here you can see that I have the computer name, I have the site name, I have the IP settings information. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to shut down the domain controller and I'm going to proceed by exporting and importing the new virtual machine. So let's shut down. Okay. Now that my machine is off, what I'm going to do next is, by the way, you have several options here. You can either export and import the machine. You can go ahead and just uh, copy the VHD files from um, the Windows uh, Explorer. There are several options that you can do, but I think the most graceful one should be uh, exporting and importing the machine. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to export the machine and I'm going to browse and select the export folder which I've pre-configured so I'm going to select that and export the machine and it's going to start exporting the machine this is going to take some time so I'm going to pause the video and resume right before the process is finished okay now the exporting succeeded just in a second and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import the machine you can achieve this by clicking the Hyper-V Manager action and then, um, let me see, I don't think it's here, let me see, when you right click on it, on the um, host that you want to do, you can see that the second option is import virtual machine. And I'm going to browse the folder, which I've exported the DC. Here it is. Click next. And you can see that um, here right here it's going to say that it's going to import the same machine but please bear in mind that this machine is going to um, the name of the machine is going to be same but we can rename that within the Hyper-V manager so I'm going to click next and this is the really important window you need to copy the virtual machine but you need to create a new unique ID and that is going to prevent any um, interruptions, um, any conflicts within your environment when you perform the cloning process. So this is really important step that you don't have to and don't um, please do not miss it. So I'm going to click next. 
and I'm going to choose different uh, locations where I want my virtual machine. So I'm going to select my other partition in London and I'm going to create a new folder and it's going to be called NLB LON DC2. Okay, I'm going to select that folder and I'm going to replace all of the other options below and click next and in here it's going to ask me where you want the virtual disk to be imported I'm going to change the location once again and I'm going to choose to be imported under the machine so I'm going to click next and finish and it's going to start the copying process of the machine this is going to take some time so I'm going to pause once again and I'm going to resume when the process is done. Now that the import process is complete, I'm going to go ahead and just rename the virtual machine and we'll change the last number to 2. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start my first domain controller because uh, you need the PDC emulator to be up and running in order for the cloning process to finish successfully. So now after my virtual machine is fully up and running, I can uh, just go ahead and uh, power on the cloned virtual machine and see what will happen next. Now that my first domain controller is up and running once again, I'm going to close this window and I'm going to connect to my second DC and power on the machine and basically it's going to start booting normally loading the operating system but um, then it will detect that uh, there is a configuration file residing in the NTDS folder the XML file that we configured and it's going to start the cloning process which will uh, take some time to to do and you will see during the process a, a percentage which need to go up to 100 for the process to be successful so let's see if uh, the process will start here as well Okay, you can see that um, it's currently starting the Active Directory domain services and uh, it's going to start reconfiguring the domain controller so that it can become uh, DC0, the DC2 that we pre-configured in the configuration file. So let's see the process. Okay, you can see that uh, currently it's starting to um, count down the completion to the cloning process. So I'm going to pause the video right here and I will resume when uh, the process is near completion. Okay, it did uh, restart uh, once and now I can see that the process is, it, it jumped into 21% completion so uh, if you noticed any restarts during the process do not panic this is I guess part of the process and um, it's going to continue and again I'm going to pause the video because I don't want to um, leave you seeing only percentages going up so I'm going to pause once again and if something interesting happens I will just unpause and explain. Okay, it jumped really fast uh, into 90% and it's going to restart my DC02 once again and while the DC is restarting I'm going to um, quickly connect into the first server so I can see let me just log in and there are a few things that I want to check um, after the promotion of the DC2 and one of those things is to check the XML files and see 
if uh, the XML files are still there and if I want to remove them because I don't want my domain controller on the next restart to think that it needs to be cloned once again and um, hopefully and uh, this is a great feature that Microsoft did is when you clone the domain controller once it's going to rename the config file so the next time when you boot up your domain controller it won't think that uh, it is um, uh, the, the cloning process is still needed so that is great so you can remove the two files if you want and you can go ahead and remove the um, two domain controllers from the security group which is the clonable domain controllers group and uh, if I go ahead and just open the clonable domain controllers group uh, I can see that currently the two domain controllers are residing in this group which is the the thing that I've mentioned earlier so uh, another thing that I want to to check is the replication between the two domain controllers and as you know replication is really um, an interesting thing and it needs time um, like everything in this world so um, I'm going to check the replication with the rep admin command and I can see that uh, currently there is a failure there but uh, most of the things are able to replicate so it needs a little bit more time to replicate the changes L let me see um. okay I can see that uh, under the replication summary the uh, replication occurred two minutes ago so um, this is a good thing to see uh, there are no uh, failures no errors which which is great I think I will um, need just more time to leave the replication to go through and fix all the issues between the DCs so I can see that uh, I can see that the cloning process was uh, pretty much successful which um, end up and wraps up wrap up this video so um, I want to thank you very much for viewing um, and if you like the video you can always hit the like button you can always subscribe to my channel uh, I will be releasing some new videos uh, in the near future so uh, again if you have any questions you can always um, ask them in the comment section below I will try to answer them and again see you soon